Hi, Gary Hoover here. On my website, Hoover's World, I um, review a lot of books. I have been into books my whole life. I really live in a library. I have 50,000 books in my house, right downstairs below where I'm standing right now. And um, if you go to Hoover's World, you'll see at the top of the page uh, buttons labeled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you click on those buttons, it'll bring up all my old book reviews. I haven't met, written a lot of them recently. I'm playing around with going to more of a video blog a little bit. So anyway, so today I want to tell you about a new book. Um, uh, the new edition just came out. Uh, for me, it's one of the three or four most important books I buy every Every year but the new one is just out and to me it's very exciting and I know people are always looking well what's new what books are coming out new and what should I read what's hot um, this is a book not many people are buying um, a lot of people don't know about it uh, but it's so important and it relates a uh, step back it relates uh, to the understanding of geography and what's going on in the world around us because I have, I'm always preaching and teaching you got to understand your context you got to understand uh, your context in time how things change through time where we come from where we're heading and the only way you know where you're going to go is to have some idea where you're coming from but also what's going on around us uh, everything from what's right under our nose the neighborhood down the street the the county down the road the the next neighboring state uh, all the way to the other side of the world and to understand the big world uh, probably the most important single book is this annual book called World Development Indicators. Uh, it's available to Amazon or it's available directly from the World Bank. Uh, the new 2011 edition just came out. Uh, I think it's like $75 on Amazon. And what it contains is 800 different uh, indicators, statistical series on 155 different countries or economies and there's no other book like it if you really want to understand the world and there are a number of good publications from the OECD the United Nations uh, World Bank IMF but this is for me the king and and I keep a copy near at hand all the time I buy it as soon as it comes out each year and I um, uh, before I go visit a country or I'm thinking about doing business with a country or something, I go through this and look at what I consider the key indicators. Um, some of the, they break it into six categories. One's a world view, which is living standards and development around the world. Number two is about people, uh, gender, male, female issues, uh, health, uh, employment. Three is the environment, natural resources, environmental change, burning a rainforest or whatever. Uh, fourth is the economy, uh, GNP, GDP growth, those key measures, uh, states and markets is number five elements of a good investment climate and uh, information on globalization and it's just page after page of big old tables uh, very a few charts and graphs and some summary text uh, describing okay what's the overall trend here but just popping open randomly here's uh, energy use uh, per capita uh, how uh, uh, oil equivalent uh, per capita consumption of energy for all the major countries in the world um, traffic congestion the importance of travel to each economy um, how much money was invested in infrastructure in each economy how big are their armed forces uh, how big is their railway and their road system um, uh, and they break it out they summarize it into uh, rich countries and poor countries and middle income countries here's trends in greenhouse gas emissions here's a share of the students that are in school and the literacy rates um, it's just for me it's almost everything you could imagine um, and and so uh, today I just throw a few numbers to pique your interest uh, the kind of stuff you're going to find in that book they have one table is table number 4.a uh, that's about uh, recent economic growth and it's looking at their preliminary estimates of the uh, GDP gross domestic product growth in 2010 and they don't do every single country but they do most of them and so I just listed what are the top ones the fastest growing ones last year based on their preliminary numbers and again this that book just uh, came out uh, uh, June of 2011 just published and uh, number one at 17 and a half percent growth was uh, Singapore and of course that's been a dynamic economy overall but one reason it was up uh, in uh, 2010 was it was actually down in 2009 so some of that's a bounce but that's still that's a phenomenal number that's really rare to see a number that high and then it really just as phenomenal especially because it's such a big economy was China at 10 percent and it didn't shrink the year before so it's continued really phenomenal growth uh, no surprise either another big name number three ranking was India nine and a half but now we get a little bit of a surprise because our next one that showed up 
is Ethiopia. And who would have thunk it, you know? And who would have thunk Paraguay at 8.5%? Now, some of these countries have been down the year before, so it's a bounce back. But that's still, they've got to be the people, uh, uh, governments of those countries have got to be relatively happy. I mean, the growth is so important, and these are huge numbers. You keep that up a few years, and you're going to pass up a lot of other countries. Number, uh, the next at 8.1 is Turkey. And if you follow the world economy, that isn't a surprise. That's been a dynamic economy overall for several years now and is an amazing country in a wonderful position, trading, relating the Middle East and the border between Asia and Europe, which it's been for centuries. And, and you know, the world's most important city for a long time was Constantinople uh, or um, uh, Istanbul, which is, uh, it was the capital of the uh, Byzantine Empire and then of the Ottoman Empire. And um, now, well, not the capital of Turkey, that's Ankara, but... Uh, the dominant city. Uh, 8.0 over here, next runners up, Argentina. Boy, that's a country that's had a lot of ups and downs. You know, what can you say? But it's such a wonderful country, wonderful people, wonderful resources. I urge you to visit it. Another one, it was a surprise to me at 8.0, Lebanon. Obviously went through terrible civil war and still has stresses and strains, but they're beginning to rebuild because it was the economic, the banking center of the Middle East and everything some time ago. And a lot of that oomph has been kind of stolen by the United Arab Emirates and other places, but um, Lebanon is, is kicking along. Another country um, uh, is Peru at 8%, and it has been uh, doing uh, very well over recent years. Uh, they just had an election down there that I think doesn't bode so well. A lot of people are concerned, where do they go now? Because uh, they may back off of their desire to help the, the people, because um, they went with a leftist government. But uh, it, it looks like in the early election stuff. Um, and then uh, the big shocker for me, who would have guessed this one? Also 8.0, Yemen. So that's the kind of uh, information and learnings you can get from a book like this. And I urge you to hop on Amazon or the World Bank site. And uh, I didn't check to see some of this data may be available for free in databases on, on their websites. You can always look at that. Personally, I, like, I still like paper books, and I like to f hold them, and I like to be able to flip back and forth rapidly. That's one reason I personally really can't use a Kindle or an iPad for reading books. I think they might be cool for uh, art and music and some other applications, but I, I am just flying back and forth, especially a book like this. So get your world development indicators, study it, think about the implications of all the numbers in there, realize that any time there's a number in there, it's... Um, it's real people, because that's a key thing, working with this kind of data. This is not just a number. This is not just about the stock market or not just for economists. This means the people of Singapore got wealthier last year, and this means, in most cases, the really poor people are less really poor, and the middle-income people are stronger middle-income and more money send their kids to school and have a better future for them and a better future for Singapore. And it probably means the rich people also got richer. Now that kind of data, the income distribution data, is also in here to see which countries have a big middle class or which ones are just a bunch of rich and poor people. But in most of these kind of places, the middle class, I mean the Chinese and Indian middle classes are exploding. Anyhow, that's uh, enough for my little book review and I'll see you later.